Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart, But shall believe that those things which he saith Shall come to pass, He shall have whatsoever he saith. Faith will work by saying it without praying. The word pray is not in that verse. Pray or prayer is not in that verse. But the word say is. Do you see that in the 24th verse? It never said a word about praying there or prayer. But faith also works in prayer. But when you pray it, you still have to say it. 23rd verse, look at it again. We see faith working without praying, but by just simply saying what you believe. Whosoever shall say, Jesus said, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. He didn't say he'll have whatsoever he prayeth. He said he'll have whatsoever he saith. It was when there on the bed of affliction that I said it. I said it out loud and it was when I began to say out loud. Not think it. He didn't say, whosoever shall think, he shall have whatsoever he thinketh. He didn't say that. He said, whosoever shall say, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I began to say out loud in my room, I believe that I receive. That's what I believe, you see. He'll have whatsoever he saith. I believe I'll receive a healing from my body. And I, I specified these things. The heart condition, the paralysis, the incurable blood disease. And then finally I just simply said, I believe I'll receive healing in case I'd miss something from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. That takes in it all, doesn't it? And you know, when I began to say it, now it will all, not all, the manifestation uh, of it will, will not always come this fast. But, but within the hour, every symptom of physical deficiency I had to disappear I was standing out of the bed on the floor healed praise God now don't you misunderstand me at all there's another scripture in the Bible that said let us hold fast our confession talking about not the confessing of sin but holding fast to our confession of faith because once you confess sin you're supposed to forget it because God said he forgot it why, why do you want to remember it and confess it to him again for because he said I will not remember thy iniquities no that confession that you're to hold fast to is the confession of your faith. And so I've held fast many times on different things that I confess that I believe that I receive. Praise God. And sometimes it's been days before it came. And sometimes it's been weeks before it came. And sometimes it's been months before it came. And one time it was four years before it came. But it came. Praise God. I've never failed to receive. Now individually, with me personally, I'm talking about something that concerns me. You understand I'm not talking about the other person. If it's, you know, when it concerns the other person, they've got something to do with that. But I'm talking about in my own individual case, my own individual life, I've always just uh, leaned more and stood more on this 23rd verse. I've always just said it. Never prayed about it. For instance, money. Now, I haven't prayed about money for years, and I've never been without it. Never pray about money. I always just say, the money will come. And here it comes. Praise God. Amen. The money will come. Money will come. If I need a certain amount, I remember on one occasion I needed by the first of the month $1,500, you see. Well, I said it, and I kept saying it at different times in prayer. I didn't pray. I just said it. Uh, by the first of the month, I'll have $1,500. Well, when the first of the month come, came, I had $1,580. I had $80 more than I needed. <laughs> but I could use it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Lord actually taught that to me, see. I, I didn't see for years. See, I'd been healed, been saved, and then healed by the power of God as a young Baptist boy. And I never thought about using your faith beyond salvation or healing. Now, many people have gotten saved, and they've never thought about using their faith beyond just salvation, believing just for that. And, and even in prayer, they don't use their faith. It's just always a struggle with them, you know. They're always a begging and a crying and a bawling and a squalling and a scratching and a pulling and a... You know, and, and getting nothing. And, and, and so I don't know why, you know, I don't know why I didn't. But I went along for several years. 
And I never had anything because I didn't believe for anything much, you know, financially and materially. Somebody said, well, now, if you're in the perfect will of God, everything's going to work just right, and he'll meet every need. Well, you still got to believe, and if you don't believe, even though you're in the perfect will of God, it still won't work right if you don't appropriate what belongs to you. Are you listening to me now? See, I think people think that these things will just fall on you automatically. They'll just fall on you like ripe cherries off of a tree, but they won't. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He's a faith God. Faith has something to do with it. You said if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. If you want us to eat the good, I know you'd want us to wear the good. And if you want us to eat the good of the land, you said if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Doesn't that mean you're prospered? Isn't that the way you interpret that? I mean, isn't that what it's saying? You're prospered? And I said, if you want us to eat the good, I know you'd want us to wear the good, and you'd want us to drive the good. And I fasted and prayed about that for three days, and the third day the Lord spoke to me. He said, the trouble with you is you don't practice what you preach. <laughs> oh, yes, he said, you sure, you practice faith when it comes to healing, and that's commendable. But he said, that's far as you ever went with your faith. He said, you see, the Lord said to me, faith is the same in every realm or in every sphere. Now, you've used, only used faith as far as salvation is concerned, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and used faith in, in healing. But faith is the same in the financial world, in the financial realm, in the financial sphere, as it is in any of the other ones. He said, now then, if it was healing that you needed for your own body, you'd just claim that by faith and go out and publicly announce that you were healed and go on preaching right while you're preaching. Every symptom sometimes would disappear if you had symptoms. See? You've got to do the same thing he said when it comes to finances. Well, I said, all right, Lord, I'll do that. The Lord said to me, now then I'll tell you what to do. First, don't ever pray about money anymore. Don't ever pray about money anymore. Don't ever pray about money anymore. I said, well, what am I going to do then? Well, he said, you just, what you need is down there. It's not up here in heaven. And I'm not going to rain any money down from heaven. Because if any money came raining down from up here to be counterfeit, now I'm not a counterfeiter. No, it's right down there. But he said, you see, I, I put everything that's in this earth, I made it all. And I didn't make it for the devil and his crowd. See, so many times people think, well, you know, you ought not to have anything. If you if you live for God, you know, if you're a Christian, you know, you ought to go through life sort of with the soles of your shoes wore out, top of your hat out, seat of your britches wore out, live on barely get along street, way down at the end of the block, right next to Grumble Alley. <laughs> and that's a sign of humility. No, it isn't. That's a sign of ignorance. Scriptural, biblical ignorance. God said to me, you read in my word in the 50th Psalm where it says, the world and the fullness thereof is mine. The cattle of a thousand hills are mine. The silver and the gold is mine. Now he said, it's mine because I'm the creator and I made it. And I didn't make it for myself. I made it for my man, Adam. And I said, Adam... I give you dominion over all the work of my hands. And so he said, Adam was originally the God of this world. He was to dominate this world. And he had dominion over the cattle of a thousand hills. And he had dominion over the silver and the gold. And he had dominion over the world and the fullness thereof. But Adam committed high treason and sold out to Satan. He became a traitor, see, and sold out to Satan. Satan wasn't originally the God of this world. Adam was. And Satan then became the God of this world. And 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verse calls him the God of this world. And so he's dominating because Adam gave him the permission, committed high treason, sold out to him. Then he's dominating the world, and he's dominating the silver and the gold. You can see that. And the cattle of a thousand hills and so on. But Jesus came to redeem us from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus, we have the authority to say, and he said to me, you just, whatever you need, you claim it. You just claim it. 
And then he said, you say, Satan, take your hand off my money because it's Satan that's keeping it from coming, not me. It's not me that's keeping your children from being fed adequately. It's not me that's keeping your children from being clothed adequately. And I saw it. I got the light. Praise God. So I said, all right, Lord, I'll just prove that out right here. I'm claiming this week $150. Now, I knew if you'd suggested to that church that they pay $75, they'd all fell over backwards. And if you'd suggested $100, they'd have said, well, that would be a miracle. And if you'd said $150, they'd said, well, that God himself couldn't do that. I mean, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's beyond all the wildest imagination. And I knew if you said that to the preacher, it'd scare him to death. So I said to him, now, I want to prove this out. So I said to him, Pastor... Uh, now, now during the meeting, don't don't put any pressure on for money. Don't ever say who will give a dime or a nickel or anything, because sometimes some pastors would if it's a little short. Just pass the plate. That's all. Just give people a chance to give. And so I, uh, I held fast to my confession, praise God, and said, Satan, take your hand off my money. Because, you see, Satan's the god of this world. He's controlling what's in this world. But you and I have authority because Jesus gave it to us. Unless we exercise it, he can't do anything about it. Nothing will be done unless you do something. Claim whatever you need. Say, Satan, take your hand off of my money. Say, go ministering spirits and cause the money to come. Well, I question that part of it. Go ministering spirits. Is, is that scripture? He said, I asked him, he said, well, the first chapter of Hebrews, right at the end of the chapter, it said, angels are ministering spirits who are sent to minister far. Now, I always thought that said too, and I quoted it wrong. I thought it said they minister to us. Sent to minister for those who are the heirs of salvation. So tell them go, cause the money to come. Well, I said, yeah, but now, now aren't we supposed to, isn't it the Holy Spirit that's going to speak to people? Well, yes. But the Lord said to me, demons and evil spirits are here and they influence people. Angels are good spirits. They're here. They want to influence people. They'll influence them to do good. Hallelujah. Praise God. So say, go ministering spirits and cause the money to come. Well, now, when I got a hold of that truth, you know, you talk about being on the bottom of the barrel, scraping the bottom of the barrel. I wasn't just scraping the bottom of the barrel. I, I was under the barrel and the barrel was on top of me. <laughs> Amen. But I got out, praise God, started rising to the top and I've been coming to the top ever since then. No, I've always just said it. Did you know it? Faith will work in your heart with doubt in your head. Because people have a doubt in their mind, many times they think, well, it won't work. You know, I'm a doubting. Did you ever have any trouble with your head? I just didn't pay any attention to my head, the devil either. Somebody said to me, Brother Hagin, because I'd said about the fact I remember we was traveling along with some friends and, and I just suddenly said to them, because we wanted to pay our building off there in Tulsa, our office building. I said, somebody's going to give me $10,000. I said that in faith. I said that on the basis you can have what you say. And it wasn't three months till the Episcopal lady, we never asked her, I never asked anybody for anything, never told her, till she gave us a check for $10,000, paid off that, our building. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now somebody said to me, well, hey, you ought to get up there and, and talk about somebody giving you $10,000. And then another, on another occasion, after I got the $10,000 check, I turned to the office force and I said, all y'all listen to me right now. Somebody's going to give me $25,000. And they did. They did. They did. And you know what's going to happen now? I'm going to let y'all all in on a secret. Somebody's going to give me $50,000. Sure they are. Just as sure as you're sitting there. Because you can have what you say. Yeah. 
somebody said, Brother Higgins, you oughtn't to tell that. You oughtn't to tell about somebody giving you a thousand dollars or ten thousand or twenty-five thousand or you driving a Cadillac. Said folks won't give. I said, Yes, they will. And I found out the more I tell it, the more they give. Somebody said, Well, I just don't like that fella coming to me. Said, I just don't like that. I said, Neither does the devil, but I'm not gonna pay attention to you the devil either one. <laughs> I'm in favor of it, and so is God. If you be willing and obedience, you'll eat the good of the land. Praise God. I wish above all things, beloved, 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. That's financial prosperity. And be in health. That's physical prosperity. Even as your soul doth prosper, that's spiritual prosperity. Can you say amen? amen. Well, how did it all come about? By saying, by saying, by saying, I just said it, I just said it. Whosoever shall say, not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. Faith works by saying it without praying, but it also works by praying. When you pray, believe. Believe what? That you receive them. See, too many times we say we believe, but we leave it hanging up here in the air, you see. But Jesus didn't say just believe. Jesus tells you exactly what to believe. Whosoever shall say, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He believes what? He believes those things which he saith shall come to pass. See, it hasn't come to pass. He believes that those things which he saith shall come to pass. They haven't come to pass yet. He wouldn't have to believe it if they'd come to pass. He'd already know it. See, bless so many darling people's heart. They're walking by sight. They say, well, I can't see it. I don't have it. I believe God's going to do it sometime. And they've missed the whole thing. they missed the whole thing. No, keep believing that those things which he saith, if he said it, shall come to pass. I just keep saying a lot of time, right in the face of, of, of contradictory circumstances, it shall come to pass. That's what he told me to believe. He didn't tell me to believe I've got it. If I've got it, I can feel it and see it. And everybody can feel it and see it. And oh, I know the crowd will look at you. And other Christians, bless their heart, that's walking beside and all of them are, and filled with doubt, they'll look at you like you're a little bit off. But don't let that disturb you because you know they're the one that's off and you're the one that's on. On God's word. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Can you see it? Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. What will happen? He shall have sooner or later... Eventually, he'll have whatsoever he saith. I know what I'm talking about. I know it's true because Jesus said it. He's not a liar. I know it's true because I put it to practice under all circumstances, under all kinds of circumstances. Amen. Amen. Oh, I've been there. Don't you misunderstand me. That doesn't mean we're not going to have any tests. That doesn't mean we're not going to have any trials. That doesn't mean everything just always going to fall on us like ripe chairs off of a tree. Oh, yeah. I've been there back there in the beginning, but I, but I learned, you see, both from God's Word and from experience. And the Lord said to me, now you go teach my people what I've taught you. Yes, sir. Faith works. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Oh, Brother Hagin, I believe. What do you believe? Well, I believe in prayer. Well, that won't work here. That's good. That's good that you believe in prayer, but that's not what he said to believe. Well, I believe the Bible so. Well, that's good, but that won't work here. That's not what he said to believe. Well, I believe in the Holy Ghost. Well, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. I do too, but that won't work here. I believe prayer changes things. Well, that's wonderful. It does, but that won't work here. No, no. He tells you exactly what to believe. 
Now here again is where people who walk with sight have trouble. They're not going to believe anything until they see it. When they see, well, when I see the money in my hand, then I'll believe. Or, for instance, if it's healed, when I feel like I'm healed, you know, and feel all the symptoms disappear, then I'll believe. Well, you wouldn't have to believe you had a thing then. You'd you know it then. I wouldn't have to believe I got a hundred dollar bill, man. I'd know it. Are you listening to me? See? But believe that you receive them. Begin to say out of your heart because you do believe it. And if you don't believe it, start saying it anyhow and you can school yourself into faith. I believe that I receive. I believe that I receive. And what will happen? And ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. Yeah, the having is going to come. But the having doesn't come first. The believing comes first and then the having. Struck